A 3D printer can be a very useful tool for makers if they are in dire need of, for example, pulleys for the next motor project or maybe a simple hex driver handle to tighten screws firmly. But once you need to print something big, like this iron core replica, the print time suddenly jumps up to 10 hours and you realize that the printer can get quite loud while moving the extruder around and also takes up a lot of space on your workbench. So in this video, I will show you how to free a 3D printer from your main computer by replacing it with a Raspberry Pi, the software Octoprint and a couple of 3D printed housings to make it all look decent. Let's get started. First off, I grabbed the Raspberry Pi 2 from my stack of single board computers and plugged in a Wi-Fi dongle as well as a camera module in order to monitor my 3D prints later on and also to create time lapses. To power the Pi, from the 3D printer's 12V power supply I used the mini bug converter and the setup was quite simple. Two 075 square millimeter wires got soldered to the input of the converter, while the other side of those wires got connected to the power source through two Vago terminals. Next, I measured the output voltage with a multimeter and adjusted it with the help of the potentiometer to around 5 volts. Then I cut off the USB Type-A connector of a micro USB cable, stripped off the isolation and soldered the red wire to the plus terminal of the converter's output and the white wire to the ground terminal. After a successful test, I got myself a micro SD card and a card reader to begin the software part. For that, I downloaded the archived image file from the Octoprint website, extracted it and used Win32 Disk Imager to install it on my SD card. Afterwards, I changed the Octopi Network TXT file by adding the access information of my wireless network. Then I stuck the SD card into the Pi, connected my 3D printer and gave the whole system power. Since all the status LEDs are lighted up in the right way, I started PuTTY and connected to the Pi via an SSH connection. By entering the Raspbian configuration, I expanded the file system and overclocked the SPC a bit before I did a final reboot. And afterwards, the Octoprint setup was complete, which can be confirmed by entering the IP address of the Pi in a browser. This should open up the welcome screen, which wants you to create a secure access account. I then changed the layout language to English, connected to my printer through the serial ports and played around with the X, Y and Z control and the camera to see whether it all functions correctly. Now, we could stop here and just use a setup like this, but the position of the camera is not fixed yet and the Pi should be mounted onto the printer. That is why I visited Thingiverse in order to find a Raspberry Pi case and also a fitting camera mount. For all the 3D prints, I used a layer height of 0.2mm and the recommended slicer settings from the manufacturer of my printer. This resulted in a print time of roughly 2 hours for the top and bottom piece of the Pi case. And since both models had a pretty simple shape with no overhangs whatsoever, the machine had no problems during the printing process. But I still had to remove quite a lot of excess plastic strings afterwards, which were created while the extruder moved from one side to another through mid-air. Nevertheless, both prints look quite neat. So I used small wood screws to secure the board to the bottom sides and M3 bolts to join both sides together. Afterwards, I printed the back and front side of the camera mount as well as the masthead. But the base of this mounting composition does not really work for me. So I measured the diameter of the aluminum rod and the distance to it for fitting viewing spots and used 1-2-3D design to create my own custom base which I printed out as well. Of course you can find my design and all the electronic components I used during this small project in the video description. After I removed the plastic strings of those parts, I performed a successful test fit and continued by gathering two 0.5 watts wide 10mm LEDs and four 22 ohm resistors. By putting two of them in parallel, they can be used to power one LED from a 5V power source. So I used hot glue to secure both LEDs into place, sold the two resistor pairs to the anode of the LEDs, sold the other sides together, used silver copper wire to connect the cathodes together and finally added two more wires to this constellation. 
At the end, I used dozens of zip ties to secure the Raspberry Pi, the bug converter, the USB wire and camera cable to the aluminum rod. The camera base, on the other hand, only needed an M3 bolts and nuts in order to secure it to the rod. And after soldering the wires for the LED to the bug converter, moving the printer to its new location and starting the Pi, this project is complete. All you need to do to start a print is slicing the SDL file the usual way, uploading the generated file to your Pi through your browser and clicking print. It really is that simple. And my 10 hour print did turn out successful in the end, even without the printer sitting next to me. I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.